Hi everybody, welcome to Mud Girl Pottery. Sorry it's been a bit since I've uh, been able to do a video. It's been a little busy around here, which is a good thing. People are signing up for classes. The studio is not quite as busy as before COVID, but it's we're doing okay. I think a lot of people have realized that pottery is the best thing you do with people, but by yourself. Go ahead and think about that. All right, so upon the request of some of my members, I keep saying, where are, my, where are your videos, where are your videos? I figured I'm gonna do one right now. Um, I was thinking nesting bowls. I think that what nesting bowls is, is in a great advancement to that first small bowl that you learned how to do. You're practicing your bowl skills, as well as going with much larger clay. So good luck. Um, you need a ruler and a rib, preferably, um, I prefer a rubber rib. Um, there are a couple of different types. My finger is in here. Um, I prefer the Kemper black rubber rib. The black one is a lot harder than the blue one. The blue one, I think, um, I can't really get that, that pressure that I'm looking for in order to get a really good line on the inside. I tend to use the thin metal rib for uh, more uh, curvy shapes where I don't need to use the whole shape. But for uh, nesting bowls and bowls in general, I prefer the Kemper plastic uh, rubber stiffer black rib. All right, here we go. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start with my first large bowl first. Uh, I think it's easier to work in than work out. If you make your small bowl first, let's say the size of it or the shape of it is wide, that's a little bit more clay. And in the end, I think it's gonna be hard to figure out what, how much clay you need for that last bowl. And I'm really big on not wasting clay. So I start with my largest bowl first and that becomes the guide for my other two bowls. So here we go. Okay guys, so one of the things that uh, I talk about all the time is starting in a good position. So that means is we wanna start with something round. If we wanna eventually make this into a round pot, why start with a cube? Why start with something that's a little asymmetrical? Something that is as close to round as possible or smooth and symmetrical is your best best bet. We want it a little flatter on the bottom because we want it to stick to the bat. So some people wet the bat first. I prefer not to. Um, putting a lot of water on here makes the clay slide off. So I'm a big fan of a dry bat and wet clay. Or if you want to put just like a little circle, some people do this. To me, I don't think it's so hard to find the middle. I don't know if I need the center. Draw a circle or a target like that, but some people do. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap that right in the middle. So there are lots of different types of bowls, as you see in the world. There is uh, ramen noodle bowls, lobster bisque bowls. So a bisque bowl would be wide so that it would cool evenly because bisque soups tend to taste better when it's cooler. Um, also a salad bowl so that you can get your knife in there if you have to, which is similar to a bisque bowl. But there's also the fruit bowl. So you want something that is wide on the bottom and then curves. We wanna be able to put two apples next to each other, not necessarily one apple on top of the other. So something wide enough to put two apples next to each other to me is considered a fruit bowl. So what I wanna do is make a fruit bowl so I can not put two apples in there, but two more bowls. It makes it a little easier for beginners to create that shape again. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and put my left elbow into my hip, create this weird right angle here, wheel going medium speed, push down just a little to make it stick. And now I'm gonna go to full speed. I'm gonna proceed to cone up. Now, one of the things that we wanna talk about when we cone up is we don't wanna just cone up by putting our two hands on the side. There's a little bit of air under here. And what's gonna happen is that clay is going to ooze underneath. Number one, you're gonna end up wasting the clay. And number two, you're never gonna have a flat surface to deal with. So I take my pinky and I take my ring finger and I make them tight like that. And I scoop up with the palms of my hands. Notice that I am not on the sides. When we start like this, basically what we're doing is telling, asking the clay to take us for a ride. We're going, here's a hand, here's a hand, now just go around like this. But if we lock our elbow in, we are actually telling the clay where we want it to go. So now that I've got it coned up, 
I'm gonna go ahead and start to karate chop down with my wheel going relatively fast. And although you don't notice it, I'm actually centering small bits at a time. I'm pushing down a little and in a little. And now that part is centered. And I'm gonna keep on doing that till I go down, but maybe not where you notice it as well as when I do it in pieces and stop. There are a lot of things that I show beginners that I don't do. Um, basically just because I know how the clay works. Now I want you guys to notice how slow I take my hands off of the clay. Okay, if I go ahead and do this, I've now thrown the clay off, the, off center. So very slow motion. Round it up by dropping my right wrist down and almost using the side of my hand to sort of shape that outside. I'm gonna clean up the bottom. I'm gonna test my clay, see if it's moving around, and it looks like it's centered. Now I want you guys to notice how wide and how flat I have made my mound of clay. This is going to dictate how large my bowl is. If you guys go back into some of my old videos, you'll should see that with beginners, I'll let you go super wide just to support those walls. A little more advanced, you can go narrow because you're gonna throw a little faster, and that's gonna cause those walls to go up without getting too wet. I'm gonna start a little wider. I'm looking for a bowl that kind of does this. We'll see how tall we go. This is three and a half pounds, sorry. So I started with a three and a half pound bowl, a two and a half and a one and a half. So now wheels going super fast, put my two thumbs close together. Now immediately my hands started getting dry, so I'm gonna slowly take my hands off and I'm gonna go straight down. Now sometimes when I'm going down, I'll notice that I didn't wedge my clay very well. I personally hate wedging clay. Uh, so I just kind of fight through it. With my hands wrapped around like this, it kind of helps to recenter it. If you might have noticed, I got this little lip that came oozing out here. So all I did was just compress that back in. Okay. So now with nesting bowls, what's really important is that you keep a consistent foot. So if you aim for a half an inch every time with each bowl, that's gonna help us get our nesting bowls to stack evenly. Now I wanna open up my floor and I, like I said, I want room for two apples, maybe two plums. I'm gonna take two fingers and I'm gonna put them in the hole. I want you guys to see this second step that I do. I'm going to combine the open up of the floor with a first pull. Two fingers inside. I'm pulling straight towards my left palm, getting a little dry here. And now look what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scoop up. So what I did was I just kinda scooped the clay just a little bit so I can kinda start that pull. Compress my floor, compress my lip, make it a little thicker. And now I've created sort of the base of my bowl. I'm gonna expand it a little bit more, but pretty much for the life of the bowl, that's pretty much gonna be the angle and the slope. So I'm gonna go ahead and compress my lip. Now, one of the things to pay attention to right now is now with your first pull, you wanna get your walls even. Why do you wanna pay attention to thicker here and thinner here for the whole life of the, of the process? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a lot of pressure down on the bottom here to get this a little thinner and no pressure up here because I don't want this any thinner. I'm gonna start down here. Notice that my, my sponge is down on the bat. I'm gonna push in a little bit. My inside hand is pushing in as well. I don't wanna lose the width of the inside of the bowl. And now I'm putting absolutely no pressure, but I do have to finish. And now I've managed to get this to be a lot even and consistent in thickness than it was prior. Now remember with bowls, the goal is to get the clay up into the walls of your clay before you yell bowl. So what do I mean by yelling bowl? Yelling bowl means just making it into a bowl and shaping it. We don't wanna do that until our walls are taller and thinner. The centripetal force will cause that to become a plate. Remember with bowls also, we wanna keep our lip a little thicker because when we do yell bowl, we're gonna stretch that out. And if this is a half, uh, an eighth, a quarter of an inch now, when we stretch it out, it's gonna be an eighth of an inch. So we wanna maintain a little bit thicker of a, wall, of a lip. 
So what I also tend to do, it's hard for you guys to see, you can't see my face. I tend to look on the side of my pot when I'm making a bowl. My wheel is starting to slow down a little. I'm starting to tell it that it's gonna be a little bit more of a bowl than it was before. And I'm still thinning out my walls. Compress my floor just one or two times. I don't go crazy. Um, when you compress your floor too much, you tend to wipe away clay. And if you're dealing with a groggy clay, you're actually wiping away the clay and leaving the grog. So when you fire it, the grog is not gonna shrink at the same rate of the clay, so that grog is gonna stick out a little bit more. So it may look like you're smoothing it out, but you're actually just making it rougher in the long run. Okay. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna actually shape my bowl. And I'm gonna do that with my rubber rib. This might be a little big. So what I do is I hold it with my four fingers here. The beveled edge is here and I'm gonna start at the top and I'm literally going to angle it this way so the clay comes towards the bevel and I'm going to just start to stretch the clay. I'm gonna start up at the top here, push it out. And now I'm gonna to start to push it down I'm going to start to put a little bit more pressure down on the bottom because the clay is thicker there and it can handle it. I'm going to make that go away. And now, oops, I'm going to go in. I'm going to make it a little rounder on the sides. Okay. So unintentionally, I've sort of created this sort of flat wide bowl. I'm just going to get rid of this angle I've got going on the side. I do that with my, my pointer finger sideways. I kind of use my finger as though it's a rib. And I just sort of wet hands, going to push up with my right index finger and just support it with my inside hand. And I'm going to give it a little bit more of a defined lip. Okay, so bowl number one, this is my outer bowl. You could definitely put maybe even some grapefruits in there. Okay, this is when the math comes in. First, I wanna go ahead, I'm gonna get rid of the excess with my wood tool. Like a pencil, blade, a little bit of an angle. Just gonna get rid of a little bit. Okay, so now, ruler. I'd like you to measure from the inside of this lip to the inside of that lip. So what we're looking at is nine inches and you can write that down on a piece of paper. I tend to write it right on my bat. And then I wanna measure the height of my wheel, of my bowl. Looks like the height is three and a quarter. Okay. Now we just want to have a rough idea of how much the in, how wide the inside is. The inside is going to determine the bottom of our second bowl. So just a loose little reading here. And I'm going to say about five and a half inches. So now, now that we've got nine, three and a quarter and five and a half, this helps us decide what our next bowl is going to be. So our next bowl is going to be an inch and a half in on the outside. So our next bowl is gonna be from here to here, seven and a half inches. From up and down, it's going to be a half an inch shorter, so it's going to be two and three quarters inches. And then we know that the mound on the inside has to be at least, oops, at least five inches. Okay, now we're ready for our second bowl. So again, now we're ready for our second bowl. And again, we wanna start with it in the proper shape to make it easier. Left hand locked into my hip, pushing in with my left hip and down. Wheel starts getting a little faster. 
You guys may hear that ticking. So what that ticking is, is inside the bats, on the bats, there's two holes. One of the holes is a little wider than the other one. Why? I just learned that what it does is it makes it easier to pull it out of, off of the bat. But what happens is after continuous use in a community studio, that larger hole, and even the smaller hole, is gonna to start to get bigger. So um, what we try and do is we try and have a little bit of a drier clay sitting around. I'm actually using my shavings from, mixed in with the water from me throwing this last bowl. Those shavings are a little drier. You don't wanna put wet clay in there because it's really just gonna move around. So always have around you a little bit of dry clay to act as sort of putty. So centering, let's talk really quick about this volcano. Why does the volcano happen? Well, a couple of reasons. Sometimes maybe your mound was too wide. Second of all, the outside of your clay becomes wetter than the inside. Or you're pulling up instead of pushing in. When you're pulling up, you're gonna pull that clay up and above. Either way, it happens, what do we do? If my clay is super wet, you will find me sort of closing it up. Um, is that best practices? Probably not. But the other thing I'll do is I'll stick my pinky in here. And as I start to push down, I will peel back this wet clay here to expose the dry clay. And as I do that, see what I'm doing? I'm dropping my wrist. And now this is the clay that was in the bottom of that volcano. I'm now gonna wet it and I'm gonna push it right into the clay. So this will actually get rid of that volcano, but what it also does is it wedges the clay on the wheel. And as I've said before, I don't like to wedge clay. Okay. So remember, we want this mound of clay to be about five and a half inches wide. Because we know that that's gonna fit, the bottom of this bowl is gonna fit inside the other bowl. If it is too wide, it's gonna sit on the sides of the bowl. I don't know if you guys understand what that means, but if you visualize it, Here's one bowl, and then if the other one's too wide, it's just gonna sit here instead of sitting down here. Now here's the skill part also. The skill is, there's my little lumpy things I was talking about. The skill is how do we make the same exact shape? Well, that is just practice. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go down a little bit more, because remember we want it to be consistently a half an inch so that we can measure down for our next bowl. All right, getting a little wide there. So I'm gonna go in with my two fingers and I'm gonna pull towards me again. What you is this? I never work at three, nine and three o'clock ever. To me, that doesn't really, that gives me a little bit too much leeway to make my hands move. I always work from here to here. lot of things that I do that I can't explain. <laughs> I try really hard to um, explain why I do things to people, but sometimes I just do it because I've been working with the clay for so long that just now I knew that if I took my thumb and I pushed it there that I would be able to get that to be a little more controlled. Um, I think that all just comes with experience. Um, maybe just watching the videos instead of expecting me to tell you what I'm doing. Just noticing nuances of what different potters do with their fingers that might be nonverbal. Start to pull my walls. Now remember, I'm aiming for seven and a half inches wide by two and three quarters high. So it's gonna be a shorter bowl than you would normally see. Now to correct the height and the width is relatively easy. The wider you go, the shorter your bowl is gonna be. So that's two inches now and six and a half inches. So we need to go 
taller. We're gonna go down here and grab a little bit more clay. Stick my head down on the side here. height but we are right almost at the width so in order to get that height we could actually collar up just a little bit remember collaring is wet hands wheel going relatively fast thumbs touching and don't worry about when it gets wonky don't feel stress it's just clay as you come off it'll straighten itself out I'm dealing with a bucket with a lot of water here so more gingerly with my so the reason I did that is because I realized that I needed to get a little bit more clay up on the bottom in order to achieve that two and three quarters okay so now we're at seven wide and three high so now I know that I can get a half an inch more this way and that will actually cause me to possibly go a half an inch low so how are we gonna do that? We are gonna go ahead and use a much smaller rubber Kemper rib, again, the black one. And my sponge is gonna be carefully on the outside. And I'm going to yell bowl. I'm gonna pull here, push it out to the seven inches that I'm looking for. And now I'm gonna seven and a half inches and then I'm gonna start to push down. And again, I'm constantly looking at my other bowl to see if I'm getting that same shape. A bowl, lots of different bowls, shapes out there. Looks like I am. I'm pretty excited about this, actually. I don't always successfully do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and measure. We're at seven and three again. So it looks like I did absolutely nothing. Let's go ahead and stretch that out a little bit more. So the three isn't a problem, right? Because the three, the two and a half that we're trying to get to, we could just cut that off, right? So again, I'm gonna use my finger as a rib. I'm gonna make that lip a little fancier the same way. I wanna have matching lips. So it's flat, got a little bit of a dent to it gonna go in here and just compress again you might have noticed I didn't compress very often and we are at seven and a half by two and a half whoop whoop awesome <laughs> super exciting as a an art person you don't usually need to rely on your math skills except when it comes to making glazes all right awesome so we are right there and right there cool great all right, so an inch and a half, the reason why are we going down an inch and a half? We're going down an inch and a half because we want room to get our fingers in there when, in order to pull out your other wheel, your other, um, oh, shh, wait a second. I'm sorry, two and three quarters, which is where we're supposed to be. Um, you don't wanna have to turn the bowls over to get them open, to get them apart. You wanna be able to stick your fingers in there. Um, if you were gonna do the type of lip that folds over, some people like the sort of folded lip, then you would go to two inches. Um, but I'm not aiming for that. I find those lips tend to chip a little. Maybe it's just me who's pretty rough with her pottery. So what I did was I measured now, so we know that the outside is seven and a half, but our inside is gonna be a little less. So our inside is gonna be six and three quarters. And our height, we know we're gonna go down a half an inch and we wanna know what the inside down there is. So the inside down here is about four inches. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that next to our bowl. And what you're gonna notice when you put them next to each other is that one's lower than the other. And you're like, hey, why? that doesn't seem like it's gonna work. That's because of that half inch foot that you've created that's gonna give the second bowl a little bit of height inside. Okay, stick some clay in there. This hole looks a little big and wonky too. All right, now I'm gonna to go to my third bowl, which is pound and a half. Mm -hmm. 
All right, guys, this is my third bowl. And what are we looking to do? Well, my second bowl was seven, well, the inside of my second bowl was a seven and a half, but then the inside of it was a little less. So the inside was, <coughs> <coughs> you have to account for the quarter inch of your, of your lip. So it's about a quarter of a half an inch less. So we're looking at about, let's say, seven inches wide so we're gonna go in to five and a half and the height was two and three quarters so we want to make the height of this bowl two and a quarter I know that seems very complicated but when you write it down it's really just simple math that will help you out a little all right so the inside of my mound that fits inside is gonna be about four inches four and a half inches, four inches works. Go down in here. Again, stop your wheel. Take your time to get this right. A little bit more. The fact that they sit evenly on top is what makes it a cool project. Pull wide and out. Now, this last one is a lot harder than people think it is. So we're looking at five and a half. I'm already at four and a half, right? So maybe some clay cutting off on this shows you another skill I can show you guys once we get started. You notice I'm not using a sponge. Um, sometimes with smaller clay, I don't really feel like I get that sponge in there. Or it really just depends on what kind of day I'm having. <laughs> It's going into December and my hands have been super dry. So sometimes I will go ahead and use the sponge a little bit more on smaller pieces because my hands are so dry that it's sucking up all the water. All right guys, so you guys have seen this all before, what I'm doing. So right now we are at about five and a half. We want to get that shape to be similar so I have a little bit more of a flatter shape myself that little bit of a fancy lip and now let's check the height we're aiming for two and a quarter all right we need a little bit more height on this so I'm going to scoop up, and I'm actually going to put a decent amount more pressure on my outside hand. That's going to make it grow without the pot, the outside getting too wide. Awesome. All right, there we go. I am right there. I'm going to stretch this out a little because all of my bowls have a little bit of a kind of a short, fat look to them. They're all consistently about the same thickness wall-wise. here now I'm looking at my bowls from where I am and you guys can't see them but as I start to make them I realize that I may have given my second bowl a little bit too much of a of an angle on the side here a little bit too much of a curve so I might actually put that right back on the wheel and fix it So what you're gonna find about doing the same shape over and over is if you keep on doing it, you actually learn muscle memory, how to create that same shape. So if you're making a set of mugs, you'll notice that mugs number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight look a lot better, a lot similar than one and two. Maybe mugs nine, your body's starting to get a little tired. So, okay. All right, we are a little wider than we want to be, but then two and a quarter. So since we're wider than we want to be, but we're a little shorter than we want to be, I'm gonna go ahead and do that collaring thing again. Just a little bit. And what that does is it makes it narrower, not as wide, and it makes it a little taller, which was our goal. Go back and fix that shape that we had so since I don't have to wipe right on this one 
I'm gonna just go ahead and clean off my bath to create a dry atmosphere. And that's it. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all three bowls and see where we're at. Okie dokie, there they are. That is my three and a half pound larger bowl, my two and a half pound, and my one and a half pound. Uh, you might notice that my my three and a half pounds a little different of a shape than it was before. Kind of went back, I felt as though here did not go as straight as it did with the other two. So I just put it back on the wheel so that I could do a little correction. Sorry about my finger. All right guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed my nesting bowl um, lesson today. Uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna let these dry a little bit, probably overnight. I'm gonna leave them gently wrapped. I'm gonna let them sit for a little bit, cover it with a light piece of plastic, let them get to about leather hard, and then I'll be back tomorrow to trim them. We'll videotape that too, and you can see the whole process. Keep on practicing, keep coming into your studio. Um, it'll get better, I promise. Talk to you soon, bye.